we feel we have almost everything as a nation. Nigeria is Africa's largest economy, 200 million people. It's the biggest black nation in the world. Nigeria is a land of opportunity, is one of those undiscovered treasures. In the top 10 of fastest growing countries, and most of them are in Africa, Nigeria is the top of that. Africa and Nigeria in particular is the last frontier. It's the El Dorado. According to population projections, Nigeria is projected to be the third largest population by 2050. This is the country of the future, but we also want it to be the country of the present. Nigeria has a lot to give to the international world, whether in terms of culture, in terms of uh, technology. We have a lot of Nigerians who are leading multinational organizations. We have a lot of Nigerians who are pioneers in their industry. So it would be great to see Nigeria as a country take its rightful place across the world. And that is Nigeria's biggest single purpose, if not the only one. It's a commitment to that single purpose of development going forward in this decade. One building block after the other. I know it will take time to get where we want to be, but I believe we're on our way to greatness. The sky is your limit. It's about talent, it's about vision, it's about leadership. We have all the key ingredients to take the country to the next level. We're not building for today, we're building for tomorrow. There's a formula we need to, to get to click, and when we click that formula, like one of those spacecraft will take off. From the very raw to the very refined, is a melting pot of so many cultures. Diamond is rough, it's covered with dead. But you bring it out and polish it, the brilliance is going to dazzle the whole world. I think that the future for Nigeria from now on can only be bright. Essentially what we are called, the sleeping giant. And I think that we're just about to awaken that giant now. The future is very bright for this country. We have everything that one can think of. The opportunity that abounds in this country is limitless. When you talk about the market size, when you talk about the uh, availability of labor, or you talk about the uh, availability of natural resources. There's no doubt that Nigeria is a great investment hub. The opportunities in numbers, when you look at the demography, 200 million people, such a big market. And therefore, if I was looking for a place to invest, the place would be Nigeria. We are open to doing business. We are diversified in how we do business. And there's no idea that is out of our reach. Between 2015 and now, Nigeria has made great progress in diverse areas. We now run a diversified economy. We want to provide the infrastructure that will be able to drive this process. We must continue to build our country. We're expanding five airports, we're building a new seaport, we're building rail, we're rehabilitating and expanding road network. There are many incentives that government is putting together to increase the number of industries in the country. We are focusing on the sectors that will help the country move to the next level. So what the government is doing, first and foremost, get the country to begin to produce. Develop local capacity, investing in local production. We've seen a lot of progress in the policies and strategies they are putting in place. Government is doing a whole lot to improve the systems in every sector. Good corporate governance, liberalization of the market, finance and tax law that actually promotes both investments, local or foreign investments. An urban environment is being created a series of incentives is coming from government. The details are all there to make it easier for investors to come. Nigeria is a physically ideal location for 
any investor because of the combination of a local market as well as access to a wider market. We are signing an agreement with so many countries, we expect direct investment to come. We need more capital to have Nigeria industrialized. It's not just about business, it's about empowering people. It's about poverty alleviation. It's about creating jobs. And if the focus is giving jobs, prosperity to Nigerians, how do we seek to attract capital to the benefit of all the players in the ecosystem? We are very keen to be part of this federal government industrial revolution plan and we need to focus on where we can add value, where we can be competitive as a country. Then it's about time we start setting structures and institutions to make Nigeria a key destination for global trade, a key destination for global investment. Really trademark the Nigeria brand. Bring those kind of excellent standards to how you do business in Nigeria and find a way to use the knowledge and experience that we've got and the skill set that we've got to create a rich and sustainable environment where people have an opportunity to do great things because there are great people in this country. The biggest strength of this country is the people. Very creative, hardworking, passionate. Nigerians are very enterprising, very ambitious. They can achieve anything. The entrepreneurship is in every Nigerian. A competitive spirit, determination to succeed. You know, nothing is impossible here. People are willing to pull their sleeves up and get the work done. No matter what hurdle you put in front of Nigerian, they will find a way around it and they'll keep going. Whatever it is, we never give up. Right, we'll always believe tomorrow will be better. So that keeps us going. Our promised land is where to reach it, you know. The country's people have been absolutely wonderful in every sphere of human endeavor. There's a special spirit that comes out of being a Nigerian. Wherever we go to in the world, we thrive. Uh, we have a highly intelligent set of people. We do our work diligently. People are extremely versatile. There is this energy. People can do anything here. We're all just looking for the opportunity and an environment for ourselves to thrive. We all have it in us to sparkle, but we're waiting for that condition. The diamond itself is, comes from a rock. Under the right conditions, it becomes a diamond. It is always good to have a firm knowledge of your history, where you're coming from, where we are today and how we want tomorrow to be. A 60-year-old nation is a nation in its infancy. Nation building is an ever unfinished business. Every generation builds on the effort of the previous generation. There's a generation ahead of me uh, that have done some phenomenal work that have created dreams for people. All we just need to do is to continue to build on that legacy, to continuously reinvent ourselves which is ingrained in our DNA. For us to really achieve the fullness of our potential, it is very important that all the things that divide us be set aside. Nigeria is strongest when it remains well. Our diversity is our strength. You just need to travel the length and breadth of this country to really experience the different culture that we have. I think that we need to celebrate ourselves a nation with over 250 tribes speaking different dialects and uh, still staying together till a time like this. Uh, it's something to celebrate. Our strength is in the unity. If you look at uh, the geography of Nigeria, you see that we are a group of disparate people that were brought together by the British colonialists. But for some reason, we have managed to forge a sense of unity. We've had our ups and downs, but when you think we're about to fall over the cliff, we tend to pull back and get ourselves back together again. We have been able to overcome a lot of hurdles over the years. And I hope we'll continue to push for that togetherness that the Founding Fathers thought of many years back. In Africa, we have a very important uh, proverb from the Yoruba people that says one, and cannot clap. We need one another to move forward. Because we're a multi-ethnic society, we cannot run away from that. Do we have diversity? Yes, we have. 
Is there an advantage? I think it is. I take great pride in being a Nigerian. To be Nigerian for me is to be a woman, is to be black, is to be a man, is to be a child, to be an adult, is to be Tiv, is to be Jokon, is to be Bagi, is to be Nipe, is to be Fulani Yoruba, it's to be no South, it's to be Christian Muslim. And none, if you're none. I think that we have to change our own narrative. I think Nigeria, we don't do enough about telling our story and our journey. The fact that we were three, four, five different nations put together to form what is Nigeria that we started off very early in the 1900s through colonial powers to just fit into an uncomfortable partnership. But over the last 60 years, we have really put the effort to become one nation. And that's something that I'm incredibly proud of day in, day out. Our strength lies in our unity, is the collective power of our population, the collective power of our diverse natural resources, the collective power of our different cultures, Working together, coming together, fighting together. It's not going to be one man or one woman. It's going to be everybody doing their shift. This is a country of unfinished greatness. And we're on our journey. We need to continue to live peacefully, to understand that Nigeria is bigger than every single one of us. The future is for the bold and we will work to ensure that the dreams and the aspirations of some of our founding fathers come to pass. Ensuring that we live a livable, workable, exciting, friendly, accommodating society for our children. Setbacks, they are not new to us. Nothing under the sun shakes us anymore. We are a people who see beyond setbacks. Years ago, we had to start all over again. It was tough, but we rebuilt every patch from scratch. Piece by piece, bit by bit, sweat upon sweat. From small steps to giant strides, we made progress for ourselves, coming back from the impossible. To build our own empires, carve our name in history, and inspire generation boost to progress. Our impact has felt across the globe like a loud gong of hope. Our fathers never gave up, nor will we. We shall continue to make a resounding name for ourselves and those that come after us. Like our people say, Ife dema dema, Onyeze, Ike dinafake, Abum Onyeze, Kiwabu dobu, Dosiako, Adadiorama, Ijele, Ezege, Ezedike, Wane, Turu Golota. Life Continental Lagabir for progress. Beyond being the biggest market in Africa, we are a particularly accessible country because we are coastal, and, uh, but we also have a land connection to other countries. And with the Africa Continental Trade Agreement that has just been passed to law, the whole of the African market is also open. And I think it's, it's a phenomenal opportunity for Nigeria. Uh, being Nigeria that large market with this uh, amount of consumers, I think the companies here are really prepared to be competitive and to export their products to other markets. And that will bring a lot of wealth to Nigerian companies and to the consumers. The African market is a $4.3 trillion market a year. Nigeria is no longer a standalone country. We are part of a bigger region. That opens up a lot of synergies between the countries we operate in terms of our route to market and how we can easily cross borders. So it will also help in one way to create a network of rail, roads and water transportation. Because we provide our services along the Gulf of Guinea, logistics-wise, uh, we don't need to get visas, we don't need to pay exorbitant prices. It will also force competitiveness for all the producers and manufacturers in the country. They have no option but to be competitive. It's going to encourage 
Nigerian companies to grow. And when they grow, they also encourage other companies to spring up. What you end up having is a multiple mix of energy in terms of ability to grow. Growth presents opportunities for all the players. These trade agreements also would facilitate influx of infrastructural money that will basically develop Africa in ways that can be unprecedented. We've been able to attract more capital and all these funds are being put back into the economy to help with the goals of trying to get Nigeria industrialized. The real estate sector, it is the most critical sector that will make Nigeria great and prosperous. Development is key to the economy of any nation. The 15,000 hectares of land that has been designated as a lucky free zone has been taken over by huge companies. We have 44 enterprises that are operational and running, and all these companies employ a lot of people. What matters to me the most is to create unprecedented employment for Nigerians. Taking into account being socially responsible operators as well, we want the communities and their youth to be partners in our progress by being valued employees, senior executives. They can rise to any kind of position. There's a lot of supply-side contracts to encourage the community to take advantage. We put factories in place, but for factories to work, we need to have local raw materials. So their ability to play in the backward integration allows us to sustain our business model. And so the vision besides really ensuring that Nigeria as a country is self-reliant is to make sure that we also drive a model of backward integration. There's so much land and there's so much natural resources sitting in this country. Nigeria has capacity to generate a lot of jobs if the agricultural potential is harnessed. And that goes beyond farming and planting. It goes to storage, packaging, retail, processing. So the opportunities are limitless really for those who want to play. Although the world is moving essentially more towards the digital economy, there's a significant amount of brick and mortar type industries that would have to anchor the development of a country. The energy sector is so crucial to unleashing the industrialization. Nigeria predominantly is an oil-centric country in terms of our history, despite the fact that we're a very gas-rich country. We have quite a mix in the oil industry that gives us more like an integrated oil and gas energy system. Nigeria has a very robust oil industry. A huge amount of the fields are still green. There are still a lot of potentials um, offshore. There are some potentials even onshore and in the swamp. We have millions of barrels of oil, deep water, as well as gas resources that have not even been tapped. We've got enormous supplies of gas. I mean, we've got 200 TCF of gas. That's what's proven. We've probably got three to four times that unproven. With all those factors and the new incentive that government is putting in place, I think we're on the right path. This country is now very, very competitive. It has a very transparent regulatory environment. You have fiscal terms that will ensure return of dividend and returns to investors. We see a major transition taking place right now locally in the energy sector. Nigeria is pushing local content and pushing it in a way whereby they're empowering a lot of indigenous companies. 15 years ago, the local content was pretty much close to zero. And um, because of all the efforts uh, of the NNPC and the government generally, there's been a significant and steady growth in local content to around about the 40% that we see right now. The Nigeria Content Development Bill was very important to Nigeria's ability to service the offshore oil and gas sector in a very cost-effective manner and bringing all the right players and investors to support it. The Nigerian Content Act, I think, was extremely useful in bringing indigenous players to the field in giving us a front seat. They're, they're trying to do a lot of things locally and because of that there's just a lot more business for the indigenous companies. 
So the total value that we retain in country becomes more when the services are being performed majorly by the local companies. There is a value chain between raw material and consumption. Uh, it will be a win-win situation. The gross domestic product that we contribute will be higher than where it is right now. The government is also investing in the downstream sector of uh, oil and gas, the refinery. Uh, I think it's a great move. It will make the, the old industry in downstream uh, economically viable, which was not the case before, uh, helping also uh, Nigeria develop. We expect that the industry will become more competitive. A service economy that takes you to the next level. Because one of the things that challenges Africa is the ability to consume the energy that they produce. Uh, we have to utilize our own resources. We can't keep exporting and then importing. We have to re-strategize and also expand our scope of services. The government coined it, it started off with the year of gas and then coined it as a decade of gas. And I think where the government's going is absolutely correct. Gas is the fuel of the future. One major program that NAPC is focusing on now is uh, gas commercialization. Not just building the gas facilities, but also investing in gas distribution systems to bring gas to the end users. We are basically, as an industry, very actively supporting the further expansion of gas into the energy mix. Helping solve one of the biggest problems grappling sub-Saharan Africa, which is access to reliable and affordable energy services. If you think about it, we've got enormous supplies of gas. We've got a big population, and so the demand side is there. Today, 80% of the electricity in country is probably generated by off-grid diesel. And you can imagine the noise pollution, the environmental pollution, and most importantly, the economic deficit. Electricity generation in the country will move towards gas. And as we go 10, 20 years from now, we'll move also towards renewable energy. So it's not only about affordable energy, but we will transit into cleaner energy sources for the benefit of humanity. The oil and gas spurs the growth to develop the country. So all that we've done, all the capacity we've built is a catalyst for industrial revolution in Nigeria. And the resources coming from the oil and gas development, particularly foreign exchange earnings, will help tremendously in boosting the economic activities to all these other sectors. And it's only on the back of industrialization that you can sustainably provide a platform which has opportunities for the youth and also provides them the basis around which they can deploy other innovative digital solutions. There is no nation today that can develop and transform its economy without improvement in telecoms. And this is an area that uh, government is investing massively and the private sector is responding accordingly. If you look at recently all the policies that have been put in place, some of these policies are so clear as to where we want to be. 90% of Nigerians are supposed to be skilled in ICT by 2025. ICT will become a, a major driver of the economy of this nation. You could take the growth of the telecommunication companies today and the ecosystem that this industry has been able to provide, whether directly or indirectly. Technology is really playing a very big role and we're going to use technology to improve in all the activities we are doing. Any digital economy has ICT as its bedrock, basically. So ICT definitely will play a major role in us achieving the whole digital economy ambition. Data is tomorrow's oil. ICT has improved the way we do business in so many ways. On your mobile device, you can do virtually everything you can do. You withdraw, you can do transfer, you can pay bills. What is more important is to spread out the message in terms of educating people about the various products and benefits that they hold for the people. Creating more digital banking to support the financial inclusion program of the government. You have to bring in more broadband penetration, more telecom infrastructure going to the rural areas, creating digital villages, creating innovation hubs. Incubation centers where people who ordinarily wouldn't have access to technology to service these sectors can. ICT is a very wide area. Everyone can find their feet somewhere along the line. Digital infrastructure, platforms, 
that support and enable innovation in agriculture, in health, in education. Only trained minds can compete in the 21st century. When you look at the history of Nigeria, what all our forefathers have done, and um, when you look at all that we accomplished very rapidly, and a lot of what our people continue to do globally, you always feel that sense of pride. We have the largest population of black race in the world. So we have responsibility for our own country, for our sub-region of West Africa, for our continent, and indeed for the world. The best way we can make the world know is not by talking about it, it's by doing. So that when Nigeria is celebrating another 60 years, it will be not just the giant in the sun in Africa, but a giant in the sun in the entire world. beginner or you don't have time to trade. Our mission and goals are centered upon delivering a technology that enables a truly open and inclusive market that is accessible to everyone, including people with little or zero knowledge about the financial market. TigerWit takes an innovative approach that leverage power of blockchain technology to deliver innovative access to the financial markets. Choose TigerWit. Trading evolved.